Mash Y out of the cutscene to use the mirror as soon as possible. Menu to the flute and press Y out of the menu to call the bird. It is optional to walk down below the stairs as you wait for the bird and bonk against the right wall as you get picked up. This will give you a chance for a faster bird pickup and to save a few frames. If you already collected the ice rod, hold A as the flute menu appears to select one as the destination on the first possible frame. If you have not collected the ice rod, hold A or tap left or up when the flute menu appears to choose 8 on the first possible frame. Hold right as you land and begin moving angle down right until Link has passed the right side of the rock below. Turn down and dash turn right when you are below the corner of the right slope. You may need to adjust your movement for dead rock RNG as you are dashing along the slope. It is optional to use the menu to hookshot as you are dashing to help read the RNG. Menu to the hookshot when you are below the ladder and hold up out of the menu to cancel your dash. Link is on the ladder when the bottom of his ears are even with the bottom of the ladder. When Link is on the ladder, slash your sword and hold it while you do a hook dash. Double pump to the top of the ladder and release your sword when Link is even with the top of the ladder. If you do this fast enough, you can get all the way to the top before your sword spin is fully charged. If you do end up releasing your sword spin, you will lose all the time saved by doing the sword climb. Optionally, you can just do a normal hook dash going up the stairs. Exit the ladder with an up input and slide angle upright against the wall above. If you are doing the Waffle House drive through continue holding upright against the slope and begin moving right when you are even with the wall to the right. Move down when you clear the ledge below and make your way below the rocks on the right. Hold angle upright as you pass below the large rocks. Take the top path above the dark green rock and exit the screen as high as possible. If any of the dead rocks block your path, you can hookshot them repeatedly to push them out of the way. If you are not doing the Waffle House drive through follow the slope angle upright until you are about a tile above the ledge, then move right. Hopping the ledge from the higher position will give you the correct alignment to use the hook shot as soon as you land. You may need to react to bad dead rock or boulder RNG after landing from the ledge hop. If a dead rock is directly on your left as you land, you want to quickly turn and sword beam it. If you choose to hook shot to the right, be aware that the bad movement RNG from the dead rocks can block you. Sudden change of direction, the dead rocks can block the rock or hit Link out of his hook animation. You will need to adapt to their movements if you are not able to hook shot, then take the top or bottom path depending on their location as well as the falling boulders. After hooking to the rock, hold angle down right until you are below the bottom rock and dash right to exit the screen. If you exited the previous screen high, move right past the slope corner, hold angle up right until you are aligned with the middle of the bridge, then dash right. If you exited the previous screen low, move right past the corner of the slope and dash up until you are aligned with the center of the bridge, then continue as before. Cancel your dash with an angle upright input as you clear the last wood peg on the top row, then move right to the edge of the bridge and hook shot to the other side. Hold angle down right until you clear the bottom right part of the bridge. And then take a small step down to align with the rock wall to the right. Start a dash and then turn right. Cancel your dash angle down right at the rock, then move down below the rock. Start a dash and turn right. Cancel your dash at the two rocks, then move below them and dash turn right, then cancel with an up input at the cave opening. If the dead rocks on the screen are directly to your right when you go to dash, you will want to move angle down right just below them and dash. There is only a 1 in 4 chance that the dead rock will move down into your path and even then it is unlikely that you will bonk. Hold up and dash immediately. Cancel your dash at the wall with a left input and then dash left. Cancel your dash with an up input and walk up the stairs. If you tap down, start a dash and then turn right, you will remain on the grid, giving you a better chance to cancel your dash at the stairs and walking up them without nudging. Typically in RTA, the likely thing to do is just to hold right and then dash through the mold arms and then cancel above the stairs with a down input to exit the cave. You may need to adjust your movement if your dash doesn't kill both mini mold arms. Hold left until you clear the slope corner, then start a dash and turn up. With good RNG, cancel your dash right above the slope corner and dash right to exit the screen. With bad RNG, either dead rock can change movement to be directly in your path. If this is the case, there are a few scenarios that can happen. The dead rock can still be hit out of your way, Link can take damage and bonk off of the dead rock, or it will completely block your path. If this happens, you will want to scroll the screen left to despawn the dead rocks, then dash below the bonk rocks and try again. 
Walk right past the slope corner, then start a dash and turn down. You also may need to adjust here for bad dead rock RNG. Optimally, you want to cancel your dash under the slope corner and dash right, but this may not be possible with bad RNG. Cancel your dash at the green rock with an angle upright input. Slash any dead rocks as needed and pick up the rock, then move right to the ladder. Hook dash when you are on the ladder and hold angle upright as you exit. Menu to hammer when you are aligned with the first peg and hold right out of the menu to hammer it. Hold angle up left during the hammer animation and move up when you are aligned with the middle peg. Hammer the second peg and then hold angle down left to hammer the last peg from above. Hold right as the portal appears and menu to quake when you are centered below the portal. Use this menu buffer to adjust for the quick warp position. The visual cue is when the back of Link's shield is even with the black line or one pixel to the left. Also, this quick warp is entering the portal directly centered or one pixel to the right. Adjust if needed and move up to enter the warp. Hold angle down right out of the warp and then optimally quake dash as soon as Link's shadow touches the quake symbol. The quake dash will put Link in the super speed state so you can easily quick hop the ledge or get super speed from the manual stairs. For the optimal strategy, hold up and menu to the cane as soon as you exit the pedestal. Move down until Link's shadow touches the manual stairs to activate super speed, then move angle up right to clear the rail and hop off of the ledge. If you are not doing the super speed strategy, the quake dash will still allow you to quick hop the ledge automatically. Hold left as you land and then double pump all the way into the entrance. Hold up and dash out of the door. Cancel with an angle up left input and then grab the magic pot. You can choose to pick up the right pot for a bomb if you are sitting at zero. To avoid bonking, this can also be a great spot to menu to the cane if you have not done so already. Stay aligned with the rail as you move up and place a platform. Continue holding up as the platform appears. Hold up and once you are off of the platform, pump right to align with the door. Hold angle up left out of the door and stay aligned with the right rail as you clear the corner. Place a platform when you get to the edge of the pit and hold angle upright against the rail as it appears. Continue holding up and if you can, kill the top right jelly if you still have sword beams. Hold right as you approach the top right exit and then move angle upright and snap into the door. If you do not have sword beams and the jelly gets in your way, remain neutral on the d-pad and let it hit you. More times than not, the timing of the jelly will electrify and knock Link off of the platform making you start from the entrance of the room again. Move right out of the door and place the platform. Continue holding right and switch to an up input when Link is on the platform. Face down and then menu to the fire rod. Fire rod when you are above the first torch, turn right to fire rod the top right torch, and then fire rod the bottom right torch right as the platform passes below it. You want to hit this torch as early as possible. Menu to the hook shot immediately after lighting the last torch. Hold left out of the menu and hook to the left torch as soon as possible. This hook shot to the left will scroll the camera back toward the door faster than if you hook to the right torch, saving around 30 frames. Hold right to clear the door, then face up and pump to the right. Clear the rail without nudging and snap into the door. Hold up and dash out of the door. Cancel with a right input just before your sword touches the first roller and hook shot to the right. Depending on when you cancel your dash, the hook shot may extend all the way to the wall or stop early and hit the edge of the roller. If this happens, Link could take damage. Hold up to walk above the second set of rails and move slightly angle upright to clear the rail at the top of the room then dash up. If your hookshot hit the roller, you will need to walk up a bit further before dashing to avoid dashing into the top roller. Cancel with an angle up left input at the top rail and move around it to get the key chest. During the chest cutscene, you want to check and see if there is a gap between the top roller and the right rail. This gap means it is safe to do the optimal strategy. Hold angle down left until you clear the right rail, then move down below it. Turn right and then start a dash and turn down to dash into the bottom part of the roller. Continue holding down and dash immediately to exit the room. Optionally, you can walk down from the chest to the bottom of the roller, then dash immediately, or wait until you are below the bottom roller to dash out. When opening the chest, if you notice that the roller is touching the right rail, you can move further to the left before taking damage from the top roller. This movement will delay your iframes long enough to safely get below the bottom roller before dashing out. Hold left and pump down against the rail, then hold angle down left and snap into the door. You can move left out of this door or just simply hold angle down left to align with the bottom of the top rail. Move left to the edge of the rail and menu to the cane. Hold angle up left out of the menu and place a platform, then slide up left against the rail. Hold left as you clear the corner and then hold up to exit the platform. 
You may need to slash the Stealthos or continue holding the sword out as you move up if it stays on the left side. Hold angle up left until the door unlocks and then snap into it. For this room, depending on where you are in the fairy prize pack, there is a chance you can get a fairy before entering Chomps. There are 14 chances to advance the prize pack before leaving Pokies 2, so it is very likely that if you don't get anything here, you will still get health and magic refill for the end of the dungeon. Hold up out of the door and wait to read the RNG before slashing your sword. If you get one of the down RNGs, slash immediately and move straight up then angle toward the pokey to double spin. Move below where the key is spawning and then start a dash as it appears and turn up. Yo Stacy, what's up girl? Cancel your dash with an angle input and hold it until the door unlocks then snap into it. If you get one of the up RNGs, walk about two tiles up before slashing, then begin angling away from the pokey when you are about in the center of the room. Move up about a tile and double spin the pokey to get the key to land in front of the door. Get all the way up against the door and then dash turn up as the key spawns to get a key dash. In most cases if the fairy drops and it is not accessible from the door dash, I would grab it. Walk up out of the door and read the RNG to determine which side of the room is clear, if any. Pump to the side as you walk up, then snap around the corner, turn up when you are just past the second set of brown blocks below. Sword beam the switch, then move down to the block below. Turn up and sword beam the switch again. This strategy is highly RNG dependent. The sword beam has a large hitbox and there is a good chance the chomp will eat your beam if it is close to the crystal switch. Hold left or right, depending on which side Link is on, toward the end block during the sword animation and begin pushing it before the pegs switch. Switch to an angle input after the block starts to move to slide toward the key chest. Use the iframes from the pegs to move through the chomps and collect the key from as far to the side as possible. Hold an angle input away from the chest during the key cutscene and slide around it. Then hold an angle input toward the door until it unlocks and then snap into it. If you do not have beams, place a cane block when you are directly above the first blue peg and explode it immediately. Place another cane block right away. This is three quick Y inputs. Hold down during the cane block animation and wait until you begin moving down to explode it. Move more than halfway down the blue peg to push the brown block to the side and continue the room as before. For the optimal strategy, you can do a hybrid technique of both the Samaria and the beams. Place a cane block when you are just past the first blue peg, then face up and beam the switch. Hold down during the crystal switch animation and explode the cane block as soon as the pegs switch. Use an angle movement toward the brown block and begin pushing it before the blue pegs go up. There is an alternative strategy known as the Brahmin block blast. This strategy is typically done when the chain chomps block both the left and right pathways. Move to whichever side has better RNG and walk up until you are even with the top brown block. Press Y and A to cane dash, then begin holding an angle input against the brown block after the cane block starts to move. This will cancel your dash so you don't run into the chomps. Press Y to explode the cane block when it is even with the crystal switches and hold left or right, depending on which side Link is on, toward the blue pegs during the cane animation. Offsetting the position of the cane block will give you enough time to get onto the blue pegs and begin pushing the block before the pegs go up again. If you get bad RNG and both sides of the room are blocked, walk straight up until you are just below the orange pegs. Hold an angle input to slide against the brown block, then snap above it. It. Move to the side until you are just past the first orange peg, then turn up and place a cane block. Hold left during the cane animation and stay above the orange pegs as you move all the way to the wall. Use an angle input to slide along the wall until you reach the orange peg. Turn down and slide along the blue pegs until you are above the second one. This movement will help to avoid damage, bait the chomps away from the blocks, and give you the correct timing for the chomp cycle. Press Y when you are above the second blue peg and continue holding the angle input until you are low enough to move to the side and push the block. After you have collected the key, go down the stairs into the next room. Hold right out of the door to cancel stair lag. It is not possible to beat the anti-fairy cycle if you get the stair lag here. Once you are out of the doorway, transition to angle down right to slide along the rail and snap down when you are above the stairs. Hold right out of the stairs and begin dashing when you have fully cleared them. Cancel your dash with a down input when you are past the right set of stairs and dash down along the right wall. Cancel with a right input when Link is even with the bottom set of stairs and snap into them. Hold angle down left out of the stairs and snap into the tube. 
If you have less than 13 arrows, you will need to collect the middle pot. Pick it up from the middle or the far right and throw it up. Hold left during the throwing animation to begin moving angle down left after you have collected the arrows. If you have less than 8 arrows, you will want to skip this arrow pot and collect the chest before ice armos. If you do not need this arrow pot, hold angle up left out of the tube and move left when you are aligned with the door. Hold angle down left out of the door and snap down when you are aligned with the tube. Try to avoid nudging the sides as they are considered rails and will reduce your movement speed just the same as nudging a rail. Hold angle up left and snap into the door. There are four different RNGs for this room. All of them start by dashing left out of the door and then dashing down along the right wall. Cancel your dash with a left input when your sword is touching the blue pegs and slash the crystal switch. At this point you will need to read the pokey RNG and decide which strat to use. For the up left RNG, with your sword held out, move down below the crystal switch until you are between the two left pegs. Move down below the blue pegs and double spin the pokey. Slide down left Left until you are below the top wall to the right, face down, and briefly wait for the start of the key animation. Start your dash during this and turn right. Cancel your dash with an angle down right input and snap into the door after it unlocks. For the down left RNG, this is actually the optimal RNG, but it also is the hardest to execute consistently. Move down with your sword held out and then move down left until Link is directly below the second blue peg from the right or just a little bit to the left. Move straight down and poke the floating skull with the bottom of your sword, then move down about another half a tile or so, and then release your spin before Link's sword drops. As a reminder, this is a poke spin technique. Hold left during the spin animation and walk left to the wall. Delay slightly, about 10 frames or so, and then walk up until you are aligned with the tile above. Start a dash as you are walking up and wait as long as possible before turning right. This delayed turn will give you the correct laser timing to safely perform a key dash. There is a slightly easier strategy for down left pokey, especially if you have beams. After hitting the switch, move below the crystal and slash downward. If you have beams, this will knock the skeleton head further down away from the pokey. Continue to hold your sword as you move down and release your spin when you are close to the upper right side of the pokey. This movement will cause the key to drop higher than in the previous strategy, which will allow you to key dash from higher up and avoid aggroing the laser. This loses about 15 frames, but can be a lot safer. For the upright RNG, move down to the corner and hold angle down right until you are just above the key door, then take a few steps to the right and then move upright to double spin the pokey as it bounces off of the wall. Move down and right until you are just above the key door and slide down right to unlock it after you collect the key and then snap into the door. For the downright RNG, move down from the switch and begin holding angle down right at the corner. Move right when you are above the keyhole and release your spin a little over a tile away from the right wall. Move right to the wall and then hold angle down right after you collect the key and then snap into the door. If the prize pack drop is not directly in front of Link and you would like to grab it, to avoid the laser eye make sure you are not facing the door as you move to grab it. Hold right out of the door and then enter the tube. Hold left as you exit the tube. If you got hit by the bunny beam, normally there will be a slight delay as you return to link form. You will want to either hold left or up and left as they are similar times to exit the tube, then quickly tap A when Link appears to cancel this animation and get boosted toward the chest. If done correctly, the bunny animation will not cause you to lose any time. Walk left until you clear the rail, then snap up and open the chest from the right side. Hold angle down right and mash L and R to clear the text. Snap right and then up into the tube. Hold left to exit the room. The normal strategy with sword beams is to dash left out of the door and then dash up when Link has fully cleared the right wall above. Turn down when your sword sticks out past the corner and sword beam the switch. Hold up during the sword animation and walk up until Link's feet are slightly above the center of the doorway. Start a dash and turn right to dash above the anti-fairies. The normal strategy without beams is to dash left out of the door and then dash up as far right as possible. Cancel your dash with a left input just past the crystal switch and slash it. Hold angle upright during the slash animation and dash up above the corner. Cancel with a right input and dash below the anti-fairies to exit the room. Hold angle down right and snap into the tube without nudging. Hold up as you exit the tube and then pump left. Snap left above the rail and snap down into the top of the tube. Exit with a left input and snap down when you are aligned with the door. Slash your sword when you get inside of the doorway and hold it as you enter the next room. 
For the Pokies 2 room, each Pokey can go in one of four different directions, meaning there are actually 16 total RNG variations for this room. In most RNGs when they split, you want to kill the left Pokey first to be closer to the door as you kill the right Pokey. If you need your prize pack drops, you can choose to delay your movement to collect dropped items. If you didn't get your prize pack drops, there is magic in the bottom left pot and a heart in the top right pot. You will need at least a little bit of magic to complete the rest of this dungeon. You will want to practice each Pokey RNG along with the roller room in order to learn the timing of the roller cycles and identify what movement to do based on which Pokey RNG you had. If you got the God RNG, you will want to dash right to the center of the room, then cancel your dash with a left input and do a key dash. This key dash is the fastest possible cycle and is safe to go for as long as the roller has not crossed the center of the room. If you got the God RNG and stop to pick up a prize pack drop, you may miss the key dash cycle and have to walk to the door. In this case, it is safe to walk as long as the roller has not fully cleared the right rail. If you get any other RNG in Pokey 2, you will not be able to make this cycle and you will have to wait for the roller to come back left and clear the left rail. This cycle goes from 515 to 631 and you will need to move up above the roller and wait until it has cleared the left rail so you can walk to the door. A good visual cue for this cycle is if the roller is moving left and has not crossed the center of the room yet. Optionally, on this cycle you can bonk the left wall, but this is only faster on the downright upright in the upright upright pokey RNGs. With a room time of about 632 or longer, it is not possible to safely walk above the roller and you will need to wait for it to bounce back right before walking to the door. On the two slowest RNGs, which are down left down left and down left down right, the roller will be back on the key dash cycle. For the down left down left RNG, move down and left out of the door until you are about halfway between the wall and the Medusa. Move down until you are just past the Medusa, then move angle down left into the pokey and double spin. Hold up during the spin animation and walk up about a tile as you slash your sword to dodge the fireball. Move down a tile and double spin the pokey as it bounces off of the wall. Hold up during the spin animation and walk up to dodge the fireball. Start a dash and turn right then cancel with down right input. At the wall and then snap into the door. For the down left down right RNG, hold angle down left out of the door until you are aligned with the second row of tiles from the left. Move down until Link is aligned above the bottom skull pot and double spin the pokey. Move up about a half a tile and then slash, then move right to align with the bottom door. Switch to angle upright and dodge the fireball, then take a small step up. Move angle upright into the pokey to double spin. Take a step down to align with the door and then start a dash and turn right. For the down left up left RNG, hold angle down left out of the door until you are under the top skull pot. Move left until you are just right of the pot and then double spin the pokey. Take a small step left and slash, then begin moving down. Double spin the pokey when you get close to it, then hold up to a line with the bottom of the medusa and dash to the door. For the down left up right RNG, hold down out of the door and spin when you are halfway to the Medusa. Take a small step left and slash, then take a small step angle down left when you clear the left side of the door. Move down when you are slightly past the left side of the Medusa to dodge the fireball. Take a small step angle down left, then move left into the pokey to double spin it. Move up to align with the bottom of the Medusa and then dash to the door. For the down right down left RNG, move down to the Medusa and wait for the fireball cycle. When the Pokies start jumping toward you, move to the right side of the Medusa to bait the fireball out of your way. Move back up and align with the left side of the top door to double spin both Pokies. Hold right during the spin and snap around the right side of the Medusa to align with the door then dash out of the room. For the down right down right RNG, hold angle down right out of the door until you are just left of the right skull pots. Move down just below the right door and double spin the pokey. Move up to align with the top of the Medusa and charge your sword. Move right to align with the skull pots, then move down and spin just before the pokey hits the wall. Delay slightly to wait for the door to open and then dash out of the room. For the down right up left RNG, move to the bottom right corner of the skull pot to double spin the pokey. Move down all the way below the pot and charge your sword, then begin moving right. Start moving angle down right when you get to the left side of the door frame, then move down to the medusa when you are aligned with the door and spin. Snap around the right side of the medusa, then start a dash when you are aligned with the right door and then turn right. 
For the downright upright RNG, move down halfway to the Medusa to double spin the pokey. Hold angle down right and slash, then move down right until you are aligned with the top of the Medusa. Wait for the fireball, dodge with an angle down right input, then move down to double spin the pokey. Delay slightly, then start a dash and turn right to exit the room. For the up left down left RNG, move down about halfway to the Medusa and double spin the pokey. Turn left and slash, then move left a few more tiles. Move down and spin after dodging the fireball. Move up above the Medusa and dash to the right side of the room, then snap into the door. For the up left down right RNG, move down about halfway to the Medusa and double spin the pokey. Face right and slash, then hold angle down right until you are aligned with the door. Move down and double spin the pokey, then walk up to align with the door and dash out. For the up left up left RNG, move left out of the door until you are halfway between the second and third row of tiles. Double spin both pokies when they get close to you. Hold angle down right and snap around the right side of the Medusa, then dash out of the room. For the up left up right RNG, which is the god RNG, move down to double spin both pokies, then walk to the right side of the Medusa and dash out of the room. For the up right down left RNG, move right out of the door until you are about a tile away from the skull pot, then move angle down right and spin. Turn left and slash, then move left to dodge the fireball. Move angle down left into the pokey and spin. Hold down during the spin animation and then start a dash when you are aligned with the top of the Medusa. Cancel your dash with an angle down right input and then snap into the door. For the up right down right RNG, move angle down right until you are below the skull pot and then move right to the bottom left corner of the pot and spin. Take a step right and slash, then move down below the door and spin. Move up to align with the door and delay slightly before dashing out. For the up right up left RNG, move to the bottom right corner of the skull pot and double spin the pokey. Take a slight step down and slash, then move right to dodge the fireball. Move angle down right and slide along the top of the Medusa and spin. Move down into the right side of the Medusa and dash out of the room. For the upright upright RNG, move right out of the door until Link is about a fourth of the way onto the second row of tiles from the right. Double spin both pokies when they get close to you. Move down to align with the door and then start a dash and turn right. Hold angle up left out of the door and snap left into the tube. Hold left out of the tube and turn up when you are aligned with the door. Hold up out of the door and dash immediately to bonk into the top wall. Hold up and dash out of the room. It's worth noting here that the roller is already moving when you enter this room, so if you do anything other than this particular movement, the roller cycle will be off and you will not be able to get the squeeze. There are several different strategy options in this room, but the most optimal is the sword beam strategy. Hold right out of the door to be aligned with the middle of the pegs, then move up and slash when you are standing on the top half of the pegs. This position will give you iframes and still allow you to move up after the pegs have switched. Move left while you wait for the crystal switch to activate and then hold angle up left during the switch animation. Move left when you are aligned with the bottom blue peg and open the chest from the right side. Hold angle up right out of the key cutscene and slide along the top block until you are aligned with the left orange peg. Sword beam the switch and move up above the pegs and slash the switch again. This will put the pegs down in the switch maze room coming up. Move angle up up left to align with the door. The next few strategies all start the same, but the optimal version requires very good movement up to the chest opening. Hold right out of the door and place a cane block just right of the orange pegs and explode it. Then immediately place another block. This is three quick Y presses. Move up to the top half of the pegs, then move all the way to the left side before the switch activates. Hold angle up left during the switch animation, then move left when you are aligned with the bottom blue peg and open the chest from the right side. Good movement here is very important not nudging the blocks going into the chest, and also choosing the chest slide to the right upon opening it. This is where the strategies diverge. The visual cue to know if you can make the squeeze is if the top black part of the roller is before the black line after the first block. The latest with very good movement is the middle of the roller is lined up with the black line after the first block. If you had good movement, you can choose to go for the optimal strategy. Hold angle up right out of the key cutscene and tap Y as you pass through the center of the blue pegs. Slide along the top blocks and snap up when you get to the first orange peg, skipping the roller cycle. After you clear the orange pegs, slash the switch and move angle up left to the door. If your movement was not clean, you will want to explode the block immediately after the chest cutscene and then move angle upright and wait to get iframes from the blue pegs. Hold angle upright during the crystal animation and use your iframes to skip the roller cycle, then continue the room as before. An alternate method is to move angle upright and dash turn left to bonk over the roller. This method is very easy, even with bad movement, but it is
is much slower. If you explode the second block too early, you will get stuck on the left side of the blue pegs below the chest. This is called peg jail. There is a method you can use to escape if this happens that only costs a few seconds. While facing up at the chest, place a cane block down and pick it up. Move down as far as you can and press up and A on the same frame to throw the block up. When the block lands, hold left to push the block onto the rail, then push the block up onto the chest. Move down, then start a dash and turn up to kick the block up to the top of the room. Press Y to explode the block when it is aligned with the switch. Move angle upright, then place a cane block below the switch and explode it. Move up above the pegs and slash the crystal switch before exiting the room. Tap left to cancel stair leg and move down to place a platform. Move down onto the platform and hold right when it begins moving, then hold down as you clear the first corner. Hold down after the platform begins moving down, then hold right when you get to the last section. Exit the platform right and nudge up slightly as you grab the skull pot to align to the switch. Step onto the switch, hold left during the switch animation and throw the pot as you step back onto the platform. Hold right after the platform starts moving and continue to hold right until you are above the rail. At this point, it is optional to menu to the hookshot to use the hookshot iframes to avoid taking damage from the fire bar. You can also sword spin on the platform to stop movement altogether and avoid getting hit at a cost of losing time. Hold down as you damage boost through the fire bar, then just hold left for the rest of the platform maze. Hold down to exit the platform and tap right to align with the door. Hold down and dash out of the door. Cancel your dash with a right input at the bottom edge of the floor. If you are lucky, this dash will kill the mini Helmosaur. Use cardinal directions to move right and down along the right edge of the pit. You want to avoid using diagonal movements because this causes the game to lag more when there is a lot happening on the screen. Cut the bottom right corner with a down left input and move down when you are aligned with the door. Hit down and A at the same time to dash downward. By doing this, it opens up the stop portion for quick laser skip from one frame to two. For the optimal strategy, you will want to cancel with a left input when you are low enough to just barely nudge the rail next to the chest and then start a dash left. Open the chest, then face right and slash the beetle, then begin holding angle down right. In some cases, your dash will knock the beetle off of the ledge. If this happens, you may need to delay the exit to prevent being hit by a laser. All strategies will use the same movement for the rest of the room. Move right to clear the rails and take a slight step up to dodge the laser as you move right to align with the door. Start a dash when you are aligned with the center of the path and turn up to dash out of the room. If you go for the optimal strategy and turn left on the wrong frame, you will want to move up above the corner then turn down. Slash the beetle into the pit while holding left to avoid falling off and then align Link with the left edge of the floor. Take a slight step down to get Link low enough to just nudge the rail next to the chest as you dash left. The trick here is to dash turn left as you are holding down. Dashing as early as possible will make it possible to beat the laser cycle. If you delay this dash at all, you risk dashing into the laser. Cancel this dash at the wall with an angle up left input and open the chest from as far right as possible. Because Link is dashing on the edge of a pit, you can elect to use the left input to cancel your dash, which can be easier than hitting up on the wrong pixel and walking into the rail taking a laser hit. Hold angle down right during the chest cutscene, then snap right below the rail and exit the room as before. The normal strategy for this room is to dash down and cancel down left when you are aligned with the key chest. Delay slightly and place a cane block to bounce the beetle into the pit. Explode the cane block and hold down, then continue the room as in the previous strategy. Hold angle upright out of the door to cut the corner, then move up to the top right corner. Start a dash when you are low enough to nudge the rail below the key door and turn left. Nudging the rail here will give you the correct alignment to do a key dash. If the mini Helmosaur is still alive, he can give you fast aggro RNG, which could hit Link out of his dash. In this case, you would need to move around and above him to either walk or dash again toward the door. For the optimal cane dash in this room, the mini Helmosaur can give you slow RNG or fast RNG. The slow RNG will give you a bit more time to execute this strategy safely. Hold angle up left out of the door until you nudge the block, then turn up. If the mini Helma has not faced right at this point, you have the safer RNG. When you get to the center blue peg, begin holding angle up left until you are aligned with the crystal switch, then turn down and place a cane block. Move up to the crystal switch, then do an item dash, and turn left. Cancel your dash with an angle up left input during the second crystal switch animation. Dashing past the orange pegs here is optimal, but will leave you open to bat RNG in this section. Turn up and dash out of the room. 
Hold angle up left out of the door and if the mini helmet has already turned right by the time you get to the blue pegs, you will want to begin moving up left past the blue pegs a bit lower than before. Use the same movement to cane dash as the previous strategy. For the safer movement, you can cancel this dash with an up input when you are just past the center of the orange pegs. You will get iframes during the cane animation. Hold left from the orange pegs and align link with the middle of the door then start a dash and turn up. If you see that the pokey is at the top of the room when you start your cane dash, it is safe to go for the optimal dash. Be aware that the anti-fairy can move up and block the door in certain situations. You may also choose to do the safer strategy and collect the peg maze bomb at a cost of about 40 frames. Hold angle up left out of the door, then take a step up and move angle up left to the crystal switch. Hold angle up left as you move past the blue peg and place a cane block to the left of the switch. Move left and pick up the bomb pot from the right side, then take a step right and throw it at the switch. Move left to the orange pegs and explode the cane block, then use the iframes to align with the door and dash out of the room. With this method, it is possible for the anti-fairy to get above you. If this happens, you will need to align Link with the right blue peg and dash up to skip the anti-fairy. If you got a magic refill earlier in the dungeon, it is optimal to walk up to the rail, then turn left and dash, skipping the magic. If you need the magic refill, but not the heart, you will want to hold angle up left out of the door and slide left along the rail. Move left and tap down when you are above the right side of the magic pot. If you pick up the pot from the right side, you will be able to hold up and left as you throw the pot and place the platform as soon as you clear the rail. Hold angle up left during the cane animation and move up onto the platform. For the damage in this fight, Trinex and both of the Fire and Ice Heads do 4 hearts of damage. The back part of Trinex does 1 heart of damage. The Fire will do 2 hearts of damage. During the second phase of Trinex, the Head will do 4 hearts of damage, and any other part will do 1 heart of damage. The Fire Head will take 2 Ice Rod shots and 5 slashes, and then the Ice Head will take 2 Fire Rod shots and 5 slashes, or typically a dash and 4 slashes. For Trinex Phase 2, it is 5 slashes, or typically a double spin in one slash. With full magic starting in this fight, you are allowed to miss four rod shots and still be fine, as long as you did okay with your sword slashes. For the Trinex backdoor strategy, hold left out of the doorway until Link is even with the second large shaped rock at the bottom. Start your dash and then tap up. Menu buffer to the ice rod, if you have not already, when Link is above the fire head. Walk to the right, turn down, and use the ice rod shot on the head. Make sure to be aligned in the middle of the head. This will prevent sideways recoil, making it harder for this strategy. Slash the head four times while holding down because of the upward recoil. Use an ice rod shot on the head again, then quickly menu to the fire rod. The reason for this quick switch is because you are unable to menu while the explosion animation is going on. Out of the menu, hold angle down right and slash the fire head one more time. This directional input will get you closer to the ice head. Line up with the ice head and use a fire rod shot. At this point, if you were able to hit the ice head, dash down into it for the first damage. If the ice head has bad RNG and is too low or too far to the left, you will need to hold angle down right until you can fire a shot to the left. Optimally after the dash, move to the right out of the head's hitbox and turn back left to quickly slash it two more times. If you got two quick slashes in, this will be the perfect timing to fire in one last rod shot and then finish it off with two more slashes. For the double poke strategy, it can save about 16 frames for one double poke and 32 frames for two double pokes along with one to two rod shots of magic for the refill timing. Saving frames on the magic refill is only optimal if you have enough health remaining so that your health finishes refilling before your magic meter. This strategy can be tough if not done correctly. The first rod shot needs to be quick to keep the left head higher up at the start. After slashing for the third time, before Link's sword drops, quickly menu to the fire rod for the next head. Out of the menu, continue to hold B, move down toward the head, and dash poke hitting him twice and killing him. If you are doing this strategy, it is advised to hold the dash a bit longer than normal to make sure that you get the double hit. The next double poke would be optional to save another rod shot in more time. Fire rod the ice head, dash through it, and slash up once. Slash your sword, move up, and dash poke. The 
timing on the ice head is very tight. If done correctly, the ice head will take damage through the phase of coming out of the fire rod hit, allowing you to slash it a few more times to kill it, avoiding another rod shot. For the front door strategy, it does lose around one second of time or so, but can be far easier to perform. Move up to the left of Trinex where the fire head will be once it comes down. Ice rod the head and slash three times. Ice rod the head again, menu to the fire rod, then slash two more times to defeat it. If done quickly enough, you will be able to move to the right and fire rod the ice head before it covers the floor in ice. After fire rodding the ice head, repeat the same process to defeat it. For Trinex phase two, begin to charge your sword for a spin. A good visual cue to line link up for height is right beneath the explosions. Horizontally, a good cue is to align the folded part of Link's hat just to the outside of the inner shell on the left. As soon as the shell has disappeared, release your spin. This will result in getting a double spin hit, totaling four hits of damage. This is a very good time to menu buffer to the hook shot, as this is the next item needed. During this menu, you can see how far left Link is recoiled and if you were able to get the double spin hit. If you were recoiled far enough left, you can easily slash forward for the last hit. If the recoil was further down, you can choose to take a step up and slash down for safety. As a reminder, for this boss fight, the heart will spawn right in the middle of the arena. Optimally, if Trinex was killed at the bottom of the screen, catch the crystal with the shadow at Link's feet. If Trinex got away and was killed higher on the screen, catch the crystal with the shadow covering Link's eyes. 